Admiral Kwong Li looked into the bridge viewer while he wiped a tear from his eye. The mushroom clouds of the kinetic strikes rose over his beloved homeland. The China of the Ming, Qin, and Han would never again exist. Firestorms were raging over the Asian continent, as well as the rest of the world of his birth. Never again would the beautiful globe of Earth be the harbor of the life it had taken four billion years to evolve. Of course, this was all four hours in the past, the time it took light to span the distance to the far outer system from the inner, in a way that made it worse. As Lee imagined how much greater the devastation was in real time. Sir, said the comm officer, Lieutenant Commander Deborah Blake, grasping tight the arms of her couch in front of her console, looking over at the grieving commander of the mission to save humanity. Admiral Molotov wishes to speak with you. Time for grief later, thought the graying Chinese officer. Now he had to focus all of his attention on the Exodus III and the precious cargo she held. Two of the Exodus craft had already been destroyed, attempting to get into subspace. Another had been chased by Kakadasan ships through the dimensional rift, and so could be counted as gone. The other might have made it, but he couldn't be sure. So as far as he knew, he had the last of the seed of humanity in the 30 megaton vessel that pulsed beneath this control room, flying toward the point where she could disappear from normal space. Admiral, said Lee, looking at the heavyset Russian on the right side of the viewer. A tactical display took up the left side, showing the battleship, two cruisers, and half dozen destroyers of the other admiral's command, and the vector arrows of the 15 Kakadasan ships that outmassed the Earth Force by more than 10 times. You must enter subspace as soon as feasible, replied the large man in accented English. There is at least one subspace-capable ship in the approaching force. Lee nodded and checked the display near his command chair. 78 seconds before they could make the jump. And the enemy ships would be close by that time. Very close. Only one of the enemy ship's vector arrows had the hash marks of a subspace drive over it. All of the enemy ships, of course, would use hyperspace, allowing them to get from here to there in the universe much faster than the more primitive subspace drive the humans were capable of producing. But several in the enemy fleet had been outfitted with an auxiliary subspace drive to allow them to track and destroy human vessels that tried to escape through the lower dimension, like this ship. Do your best, Admiral, said Lee, looking his old friend in the eye. Do your best to get the race to safety, said the other man, looking over his shoulder for a second as a quick frown crossed his face. He looked back at the man whose vessel his were to sacrifice themselves for. We'll keep them off you long enough, but get your ass out of this space and free and clear. And may your ancestors avenge us when the day comes. Molotov out. May the gods bless you, whispered Lee, as he watched the vector arrows head for his ship, impossible acceleration figures in the multiple hundreds of gravities glaring under the points. The forward viewer shifted to a magnified view of the approaching enemy. The view shifted back, and Bismarck was centered in the human formation, waiting for the closing death. One of the human destroyers flared with white-hot vapor when incoming lasers struck the hull. The ship tried to intercept the beams with its electromag field projected out into a compact shield. The light-bending field attenuated the lasers slightly, spreading them from ravening pinpoints to larger circles meters in diameter. But they were still too much for the smaller and weaker vessel, which continued to gout vapor while internal explosions ripped through the ship and then it was gone in a flare of fire when the fusion reactor exploded. Dozens of other flares erupted through the spreading wreckage as the warheads it had carried detonated in sympathetic fury. They're too much for us, cried Lieutenant Krishnamurta from the helm, his wide eyes looking over his shoulder at the admiral. 